And joining me now, New York Times foreign correspondent Rukmini Kalamachi, who has covered Islamic extremism, including Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Um, Rukmini, you've been, you've been tweeting and writing about uh, the credit or lack of credit that has been taken by ISIS in the wake of this attack in Turkey. Many people thinking that it has all the, the fingerprints of ISIS. Why haven't they claimed credit if, in fact, they have done it? Chris, that's a really good question. Um, Turkey is is probably the only uh, country, perhaps in the world, uh, where ISIS does not claim credit for attacks that we believe they have they have carried out. The reason for this, according to analysts, is that Turkey has acted as the rear base uh, for ISIS ever since uh, this group came to prominence. It's through Istanbul Airport that uh, that hundreds, if not thousands, of their foreign recruits have passed, uh, and it's in southern Turkey that many of them. Uh, go to hospitals to get treated, to Western Union offices to send money, um, uh, etc. And so, uh, on the one hand, they want to, I think, punish Turkey for uh, for their alliance uh, with the West, but uh, perhaps uh, by not claiming credit, they're leaving just enough gray uh, so that they don't uh, create a full-on clash. Uh, with the country that has that has in a way been a host for them is that is that great what, what I have a hard time getting my head around is is the is the audience for that the the state in the in this in the government in Erdogan or is it the the Turkish people in say southern Turkey near the border area who they do not want to alienate well I, I think that that if if Turkey really wanted to uh, to crack down on this group, there are a lot more things that they could do uh, to, to seal the border, um, and and so. ISIS stands to lose a lot if suddenly Turkey, from one day to the next, um, ramped up security at the border, where, where, according to one source of mine who was just there, uh, in, in certain places there's a wall that you can quite easily uh, scale, and in other places there's there's just a wire. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a porous uh, border, uh, and that has served them well. Um, and so you can see how they, they might want to play it both ways. Um, talk about what this means in terms of the direction of ISIS on what it is celebrating as a two-year anniversary of the declaration of its caliphate. Um, it seemed very preoccupied mm -hmm. primarily with governing a territorial area. Uh, it has seemed to shift towards more outward attacks. How should we understand that shift in strategy? Chris, as I reported in, in an article in the Times a couple of months ago, I think what people um, have have missed in this in this equation uh, is they've missed how many failed plots there were by ISIS operatives sent from Syria. These are foreign fighters who trained in Syria. How many of failed plots there were in the West? ISIS began sending foreign fighters back to Europe as early as 2014 before they even declared a caliphate. So my own reporting has shown that these two goals, uh, governing territory, and hitting the West have really been intertwined since since the mm. very beginnings of this group as we know it today. Um, there's there's a lot of chatter that ISIS is now um, uh, hitting the West because they're squeezed in their territory in Iraq and Syria. That's simply not true. You have to just look back to their earliest attacks, um, starting with Mehdi Namouche, um, who was one of the jailers of the foreign hostages and who hit the Brussels Museum uh, uh, years ago. Um, so I, I think that that paradigm is incorrect, and I think we need to start trying to understand this, this group at, at, a, at a more granular level. So if we were to, to, to understand them at a granular level, uh, if, if that paradigm of sort of territorial losses, shifted strategic uh, attacks uh, towards the West it, it is not right, um, what ultimately is the uh, best outcome for the Western forces, the U.S. among them, the Iraqi army, uh, frankly, the Assad government and many others who are fighting ISIS in, in, in different ways uh, for the group's defeat. Is there such thing as actual defeat for this group? That's a really complicated question, uh, Chris, and I think that, um, f first of all, you have to look at the territory that it holds. Without a doubt, uh, this is a group that gets a lot of energy from the claim that they have a territory that they've declared as a caliphate. Um, I've spoken to some of these ISIS members, and it it's hard for us as Westerners to understand just how exciting this idea of the caliphate is, but it's truly something that, that gives them fire. So, um, uh, you know, analysts and officials have said that the number one goal needs to 
be to, to get rid of the caliphate, and that means reducing their territory in Iraq and Syria, uh, especially key cit cities like, uh, like Raqqa and like Mosul. But the reality is that this is a group that, much like al-Qaeda before it, um, is a group that has metastized. They have territory not just in, in Iraq and Syria, so even if Raqqa was to fall today, they still have portions of Libya, p portions of the Sinai, um, they, they have an active presence in Bangladesh, in Afghanistan, and I won't go on. Um, so, so it becomes um, a much larger fight. And even if all of those territories are taken away, I think then you end up just with a group like al-Qaeda, which right. is on the run, but which remains a threat um, uh, to, to the West. Yeah, that, 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 that is sort of the, the frustrating uh, possibility here is that battlefield defeats uh, yeah. don't necessarily spe spell some existential end, just as uh, al-Qaeda being uh, pushed out of Afghanistan did not spend the end of that. Rukmini Kalamachi uh, in Paris, a fantastic reporter. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it.